just sitting here, uh, looking at the wagon, I guess reflecting. Uh, you know, I can't do too much work on one day. I'm just easing back into it, guys. But uh, thinking to myself, gotta check out mommy walking the dogs. Um, just looking at this thing, wondering what would I have done differently if I had to build it again and say I was just gonna, I had no intentions of ever doing it like this from the beginning. Like I said to you guys before, this was a, this was supposed to be a Beta Rambler, Home Depot, grocery get a car, period. Just like the Concorde turned out to be. <laughs> and uh, it just went a wild within like a week. But um, two things that I would do different right off the bat. One, the firewall would come out and the motor would come back to the point where uh, the windshield would have to be boxed a little. So I think that's cool. And the seating would be changed inside. From the day I got this car, and a lot of people, a lot of you guys don't know this, um, Mike Lodi 3 quarter knows it, Steve knows it, but uh, I wanted this car to be right hand drive from day one. And uh, either this car would have been right hand drive, if I knew it was going to do this with the axle especially, either it would have been right hand drive or it would have been, uh, I would have left the steering wheel on the left side, but I would have moved it to the back seat along with the motor relocation. So the back seat would have been gone, which is folded down anyway. And say I would have set the motor back, I don't know, a foot. I would have set the seat back a foot. Uh, so you get in the car, you know, you got the super long steering column and all the other happy crap that goes with it. Those are the two things that I would really like to do to the car, but that's major surgery at this point. You know, that's saying, that's committing to a major thing again. I don't think I'm committing to anything major to this car ever again other than paint and uh, but those are two things especially the I mean the motor setback goes hand in hand with the seat setback you set the motor back it's hard to leave the seat where it is you can uh, a buddy of mine had a 68 Chevelle with a six inch motor setback and the firewall you know cut out for that reason and uh, allowed the car to hook really good and stand up but, uh, yeah but mine wouldn't be no six inches it would be more like a foot at least, you know, looking at it up there from the back of the box of the thing, I would want to scoop at least halfway into the windshield. Then you'd have to go with a, like a Lexan windshield and you'd have to box it and stuff. But, uh, yeah, those are things I'd really like to do. If I ever did another car, that's what I would start off with, because that's something you do when you start, not, not when you're finishing. But, um, I really want to leave this car set in black. The guy I know passed a comment, I won't say his name, but his comment was, what are you going to do when satin black's out of style? And I said to him, I said, dude, you got to know me by now. I don't build cars because they're in style or because someone else likes them. I like the satin black. I've liked it since I'm a kid. I think this car is one I can get away with on it. But I do want to paint the roof. And... This was a discussion between me and Billy. That's the guy with the uh, red 63 Nova Gasser. We were talking about it briefly the other day. Um, I want to do the roof gold. Okay, cause originally gold, but not that gold. I want to do it more of a gold gold, a traditional gold, like a 70 Chevy gold, but it can't come from a Chevy. Um, but we're flaking it. Um, and. I would love to do that next winter, be my only project. And it might sound small, I guess it sounds small to your body guys, but that's huge for me. Because that's on our windshield, on our side windows, which I'm going to do anyway. Uh, the side windows aren't a problem. I got new gaskets. Even if I drop a window, I got a window. Uh, windshield, uh, the chrome is mint around the glass. Windshield is absolutely mint. But the, the strip that holds it in is on a scale of 1 to 10, it's like a 2. <laughs> uh, so if I can't get another one, I can't pop it out. There's just no way this, this gasket is. Let me put this just away. 
This casket is not outdoor worthy. <laughs> um, but I'd love to see now my friend Steve has the 63 Nova Wagon that he just did. Now a Nova Wagon has a rain gutter around the whole entire roof, so you just paint just the top. You don't do the A pillar, there's no B pillars, there's no C pillar, there's nothing to do. This car, the A pillars, roof color. So there's a gutter over the B pillar. And when you get back here, the gutter comes down. So the C pillar back here has to be painted. That strip that I left gold here doesn't, but this has to be painted. And what's always been strange about these cars when they two-tone them is some people two-tone this little piece and some people don't. And I think it looks strange when you don't. So it's a lot of a lot of work. So and then the fact that I never shot metal flake. I mean, I've gone online. I see some of the equipment that they use. If you really want to get into the heavy flake, which I do, you know, like doom buggy and bass boat flake. Uh, Billy was telling me the numbers in millimeters or whatever to the size of the flake or thousands. He was saying, and uh, I know Rich. There's a different Rich. Uh, the one I went to um, swap me with. And part of my, you know, my club, and I know him for 15 years. He's done metal flake. His 40 Ford, he had done metal flake 40 years ago. And um, it was a strange thing. He did that car. I'm gonna. It's about 40 years ago. It was silver with silver metal flake in it. And you know, as time went on, as 100 years went by, the the lack of paint started to crack and check. And his buddy got him this chemical from the auto supply store, I guess you guys know what it is, and supposedly you spray it on top of the lacquer and it remelts the lacquer. And he actually re-sprayed or remelted the lacquer and all the checking disappeared. And it was like that for at least a year before he sold the car. He just sold it because he uh, he just can't couldn't drive it anymore with his eyesight. And it was pretty much a handful. It was a 40 Ford gasser. 440 Mopar automatic in it, so it was a, it was a handful. So and he had already built the 39, which is a regular street rod type, you know, car. Uh, but um, like I said, this is just some of the things thinking back. I guess that's why I have so many cars because I I like so many different uh, styles. Like the AMX is a thousand percent stock. The American, the body stock, but the wheels and some of the stuff aren't. And then this car is just totally modified. And the Concord Speeder. Even though when I got the car, it wasn't, it was too clean to be a Beater. <laughs> just, you know, six years of driving it, four years of daily driving it, and two years of now swap meeting it. It's become more of a daily driver. that's about it I mean I'm completely satisfied with everything I've had done to the car uh, I don't think anything I did I would change you know some of the things that might have gone about it slightly different you know because you, it's amazing how you think about something for a long period of time on how to do it and then right after you do it you say to yourself you know I could have did it this way <laughs> so at least that's the way it turns out in my brain After looking at Billy's car and a couple of these cars out there, um, I think that fuel tank in the front is going to be black. I think black would be a little more sinister, just like the car really is.